Hello, and welcome to another Blue Monkey Forensics video. In this video, we will look at some tips and tricks on using Microsoft PowerShell. In particular, we will be looking at the Tab Complete feature. To launch PowerShell, you can left click on the Windows Start button and then type in PowerShell and then select Windows PowerShell. And lastly, you want to run this as the administrator because some of the information we want to access is restricted from a normal user. And to use the features we're gonna be talking about today, you need to be using PowerShell version three or higher. So to check the version of PowerShell you are running, type $PS version table. And then the output, look for the value of PS version. In my case, I'm running version 5.1, build 19.041, Revision 1237, so this will work. If you're unfamiliar with Tab Complete, this is a feature in PowerShell that automatically expands the name of the first match that it finds. Continuing to press the Tab key will cycle through all the available choices. And did you know that the Tab Complete can be used for command names, parameter names, argument values, and additional file names? Let's look at an example. If I start to type add-co and then hit tab, my system will give me the first command that starts with add-co, which is add computer. If I hit tab again, it will go to the next command that starts with add-co, which is add content. If I hit tab again, it will go to the next command that starts with add-co, which in my case, there is none. So it goes back to the first command of add computer and so on and I can use shift tab to go backwards. So let's say that the command I am interested in is add content. So I will stop tabbing once I get back to add content and then hit the space to continue. And then I enter dash capital E, which is the start of a parameter name. At this point, I will hit tab to get PowerShell to complete the parameter instead of the command name. PowerShell will give me the first parameter that starts with dash E, which is exclude. And I can hit tab to see the next parameter, which is encoding. And then as I continue to hit, hit tab, I see dash error action, dash EA, which is a shortcut for error action, uh, dash error variable, dash EV, which again is a shortcut, but this time is for error variable and then back to dash exclude. So I will keep going until I see dash encoding, which is what I'm interested in. And then I am gonna hit space and then tab again. Now I get the argument values that belong to dash encoding, which starts with ASCII. If I hit tab again, I see big Indian Unicode, big Indian UTF-32, byte, default, OEM, string, Unicode, unknown, UTF-32, UTF-7, UTF-8, and back to ASCII. So I'm gonna keep tabbing until I get to ASCII, and then I hit space, and then tab again. Now what I'm gonna get is dot device one slash, which is the first file or folder in the current directory that I'm operating in. If I hit tab again, I will see the file named device1.cache, and then device1 underscore laptop.e01, device2 underscore media card.e01, and then back to slash device1 slash. So I'll hit tab one more time to get to device1.cache, and then hit the space bar to choose that file. Now I have a complete and valid command line built with file complete, so I know there are no typos for this particular command, the parameter chosen, its argument, and finally, which file to operate on. So these are the four types of completion that tab complete will help the user with. So tab complete is cool, but do you know what's cooler? But wait, before we get to that, do me a huge favor and click on the like button below. It costs you nothing, but it helps me out a lot. All right, so back to What's better than tab complete? Menu complete. What's menu complete and how do you use it, you may ask? Well, let's take a look by using the same example as before. Let's start the command line with just the add 
CO. And this time, instead of hitting tab, I'm going to hold down the control key and then tap the space bar. What appears is the completion of the command on the command line with the add computer command. And then on the line below that, you will see all of the other possibilities for completion, which is add computer and add content. And below that line, we see the syntax for using the highlighted command. So in this first example, we see that add computer has the optional dash domain name parameter, the dash credential parameter, etc. So you can clearly see how to use the command. If we use the arrow key to the right and then highlight add content, we see that the syntax for add content is now displayed. And you can use the arrow keys to go back and forth. So let's go ahead and highlight add content and then hit the space bar to select that command and move on. Now that I know the syntax of add content, I will type dash E to get the parameter that I want. And then I type control space bar. Now the parameter field will be filled in with the first option of dash exclude. And you can see all the other possible matches on the line below. We have exclude, encoding, error action, EA, error variable, and EV all listed out for us. And again, use the arrow keys to get to the parameter you want, which is uh, encoding, and then um, hit the spacebar to select that parameter. So at this point, the dash encoding parameter has arguments that it will accept. Again, I can hold the control spacebar to get the possible matches. The first match of ASCII is filled in on the command line, and then the other possible matches are listed below. We have ASCII, Big Indian Unicode, Big Indian UTF-32, Byte, Default, OEM, String, Unicode, Unknown, UTF-32, UTF-7, and UTF-8. And I will use the arrow keys to select ASCII, and then hit the space bar to select that argument. And lastly, I can hit the control space bar combination again to see the possible files that are in the current directory. We have the folder slash device one slash and the files device one dot cache, device one underscore laptop dot e01 and device two underscore media card dot e01. I will just use the arrow keys to highlight the file device one dot cache and then hit the space bar to select that file. So now we see that we have built a complete command line that is free of typos as we use the menu complete function to build each stage of the command. So we use both the tab complete and menu complete methods to autocomplete a command line name, the parameter name, argument values, and of course the file names. Hopefully this was useful. Those folks who have been using the PowerShell ISE integrated scripting environment may already know of these features from the GUI perspective, but I personally don't like having to scroll up and down the lists and prefers to see everything on the command line. As we saw in the beginning, I'm still using PowerShell version 5.1. In newer versions like 7.0 and above, there are many new features and bug fixes. If you want to see more content on that or have thoughts on what you saw here, leave a comment below. For more Windows Forensics videos, watch these videos here. Leave a comment below and make sure you click on the blue monkey to subscribe. Thanks for your time and happy hunting.